Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. If you've been on my channel for a while, you know that the main distro that I use 99% of the time is Linux Mint. However, every now and then, I'll also take a sneak peek at other Linux distributions like Ubuntu 18.04. Now, every now and then, a lot of the people who actually watch my channel, they do use Linux and they use, do use a different variety of Linux distributions or versions. And so the one that keeps coming up all the time, specifically because of a viewer, Rose, thank you so much for pointing this out, is MX Linux. And so I thought I'd give it a shot and just to take a look at it today. I'm not really familiar with this at all, but the main consistent thing that I hear is that this is easy to use, it's stable, and so those are things that I like. And it's also, as far as I know, it is Debian based. Okay, so that's similar to what Ubuntu is based upon Debian and Linux Mint is based upon Ubuntu. So they're all Debian based at the end. And so whenever you come to the website, you could go to the download directly link and just download from whatever region that you're close to, choose the different version that you want, and that's it. And whenever you download it, the actual file itself, it's about 1.3 gigs. So it's not too large. And also, I always do recommend that if you wanted to help support the people who develop this, be sure to go to their contribute tab and help them out there. So let's go ahead and get started with this. Now, I might not be going through every single step, and so I might actually speed up some of it because I didn't want to take too long. And so I'm going to actually show you how I install it. But like I said, I might speed that up. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. And I'm doing all of this through Oracle VirtualBox Manager. That is my preferred choice. And so I'm going to go ahead and Okay, so now that I put in all my VirtualBox settings, I could go ahead and start this. And let's see how this looks. Great. That started up right away. And so let's go ahead and install this. Okay. All right, great. Uh, let me go ahead and make this widescreen or as wide as I could get. Okay, wow. Wow, that looks nice. That came up really quick. So what is this? Uh, stable with amazing tools. Okay. So that's cool. So let's go ahead and go to the installer. Okay. All right. So very simple. And if you've ever installed any Ubuntu base, you know, a Linux distribution, this should be very familiar. Basically, it's very easy to use. So here, I'm not going to do any type of petitioning. I'm going to use the entire disk. And since this is on a virtual machine, it's okay. It doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and do that. Wow, so that was a really quick and easy install. So that's probably one of the simplest that I've used. So once that's done, you're going to go ahead and select the boot method. So let's go ahead and do that. Select grub. Since this isn't a virtual machine, I don't really care too much about what I do on the partition. Okay, so let's go ahead and name your computer. MX Linux Pro. Yes. Okay, default username, MX Linux. Default password. Now here's where it's a little bit different. You will have to put in a root password as well. Okay, pretty much Ubuntu, they don't let you do that. And also Linux Mint as well. So, but you do have to put this here. I guess just put auto login. Since this is in a virtual machine, I'm not too concerned about security. Okay, great, it's finished. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and reboot. Great, there's Grub. Let's go ahead and start it. All right, we have MX Linux now. So let's go ahead and make this full screen. 
And so I've never used MX Linux before and I really have not gone through any other tutorials or manuals and so this is fresh. I'm brand new to this, okay? So a lot of this I might be fumbling around, but it looks very familiar in terms of, you know, I'm used to Linux Mint, so this isn't too far away from that. So that is a welcome dialogue and let's move around this real quick. So as you can see, the panel is on the left. So things that are already installed, obviously a browser. So already pre-installed. And then let's look around here. That is your home folder. Okay. And then what is this right there? This is for, oh, a synaptic package manager. Okay. So that's like the old school way of installing programs. So for people who are brand new to Linux, this might be intimidating, but this is how, especially in the whole Ubuntu Debian world, this is what people use to actually install programs. But now we have their, you know, your repos and app stores, basically. What is that? I'm not sure what that is. Okay. What is this one right here? That's your networking. That's your sound volume. This is computer. Not sure what computer does. Okay, what does this one do? Mount and unmount. Okay, and this is okay. So that is your menu, and so it does take a little while to get used to. Not too, not too long though. I mean, it's just the fact that things are on the left. Okay, so your settings. Let me go through. Let me see what programs are actually pre-installed already. Okay, so let's start with accessories. So you have archive manager. There's a theme manager. I'll probably get into that a little bit later. Okay. Okay, that is your login window. Clock onboard. Okay. Password. Take a screenshot. Great. There's a task manager. CD burning application. Okay, those are accessories. Let's go to games. Solitaire. Space shooter. Okay. Cool. At least they're putting some really simple and easy games. That was unexpected. Graphics. All right. GIMP is already here. G scan for PDF. LibreOffice Draw, Simple Scan, Nomax Image Viewer, okay. Internet, Firefox, GNOME PPP, Hex Chat, Thunderbird Mail, Transmission, okay. Multimedia, great. We already have an audio mixer. I know, probably show you that later, but that's great. Too. That's already built in. CD Ripper for people who still have optical medium. So this is like a FM radio streams. I haven't used this before mp3 players great this is for your video camera if you have a webcam this is great that it has this post audio volume control at least for linux man i have to download this separately okay browse and search videos from youtube i've never used that before sm tube hmm, that's interesting voc media player and xf burn another dvd cd burning application so this one's to rip audio tracks and this one's actually a burning application Look at MX tools. These are all related to MX. Okay. It's a lot of stuff there. I'm not familiar with these, obviously, because I've never used it. But that is quite a few things. Office. We have the entire Libre Office. We have the ebook reader. Let me see. Okay. Calendar. Okay. Let's go to settings. Profile image, Adobe Flash Player, that's interesting. Uh, desktop background, firewall configuration, gcarded, MX time, MX tweet. Okay, JDK is already there for Java. Drives, uh, there's a lot of stuff here. Here's system stuff. Conky, okay, Grub customizer. Wow, print settings, printers, root terminal, Samba, if you do networking stuff. There's the Synaptic Package Manager. Okay, so from what I could see here, there's a lot of stuff here. And that's great because that's the one thing that I absolutely love, love about Linux Mint is that it gives you everything you need. And it seems like this does the same thing and it actually offers a little bit more uh, than what you would get in Linux Mint. So it does have some nice wallpaper here that's cool okay great and it's fast I will say that MX Linux is 
it's really fast. You know, I'd, I'd say it's probably even faster than uh, Linux Mint so far. You know, at least what I'm testing right now. Okay, so I'm going to leave it here for now. Let's go a little bit further on this. And so this is like different, but also familiar. Okay, so if you have used Linux Mint or Ubuntu, then this will be very familiar to you. And so the learning curve doesn't seem like it's going to be that high. So let's look at this Conky theme manager. So, okay, so themes. Yeah. Mm. So I like the fact that they did have this here. Uh, but it's not. Wow, that's cool. So let me try that. Okay, let's preview that. Okay, so how do I install that? It's not actually the most user friendly here because even here, okay, so I'm not going to do that for now, but that's kind of confusing in my opinion. Okay. So task manager. Okay. So what I can tell right now is that at least the user interface, uh, even though it's nice and clean for the most part, at least right now, it's not as polished as I would say with Linux Mint, okay, or even Ubuntu. Not to say that it looks bad, it just doesn't look as polished, okay. So, what's other things? MX Tools, great. So, all right, it has a live USB maker, codec setup, okay. One thing I will say though is that these settings, they're kind of there's like multiple areas of settings. Okay, so there's, you know, unlike Linux Mint where everything's all in one place, this is kind of spread out in many different areas. Okay, and so if you are new to Linux, then if you started with this, even though it's not too difficult, if you've never used Linux before, this can get kind of confusing. Okay, but obviously if you start with MX Linux, then <clears throat> this might not be too difficult. And so I'm assuming Conky is their, I'm not really sure, Conky manager, okay, maybe that's like their software manager, I'm thinking, or updates, I'm not really sure yet, hmm, okay. So what I'm going to do, since this is just my first look, I might do a review of it later because this is brand new to me. And there are quite a few things here that I'm not really familiar with. And so what I will say is this. MX Linux, I think it's pretty cool, okay, without digging into it. So far, the things that I like about it is it's super easy to install. The performance is really fast. And then they provide you with pretty much all the programs you would need and more. Okay, so that's very impressive that they were able to do that. Now, the things that <clears throat> I'm not really digging right now is that the navigation, there's so many different ways you could do things and just by going here and it's specifically with settings and stuff, uh, it's not quite as user friendly, I would say. And maybe that's because I'm not used to that. Okay, I'm used to Linux Mint. And also the whole look and feel, it just kind of misses some of that polish. Okay, so uh, that's my overall thoughts on MX Linux right now. Overall, I think this is a solid distro without getting further into details, but this is just a first look. And so once again, I do want to thank everybody who actually told me about MX Linux. And so uh, I am not a type of person who actually jumps around from distro to distro, but every now and then I do like to come in and take a look at other Linux distributions that people like and that they use on a regular basis. And so this is one that has been talked about quite a bit. And so later on, I might do a follow up review on this, a more in depth review as I get to actually understand how MX Linux works more. And so if you had any thoughts on MX Linux or any other distro that you enjoy, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to subscribe. And if you wanted to support my channel further, you could do that at patreon.com forward slash geek outdoors. 
Hey geeks, if you are a creative geek like me and you actually wanted to learn how to create content on YouTube and other places on the internet, then join my Go Content Creators Group where you would get access to 30 free videos and more continuing content for all their creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is all of this is free. All you have to do is simply go to the link below, head over to our page and join my Go Content Creators Group. Thanks a lot and I will see you on the other side. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com. And I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.